We're so happy to have you with us again. And uh, we're just getting great reports of weekly uh, people listening to the podcast and enjoying it. If you enjoy this podcast, uh, can you please share it with somebody? Uh, let your friends know about it, whether you listen to it on uh, Apple or Spotify or uh, you watch it on YouTube. Uh, any of those uh, uh, th those ways can be shared easily on your social media or just call up a friend and tell them if this podcast is impacting your life. And we also encourage you to get to know us at the BDC, the Buffalo Dream Center, just a little bit better. Visit our website at buffalodreamcenter.org. You know you can bring mission trips here. You can get involved if you live in the Buffalo area. But you can also, if you are from outside of Buffalo, be involved in many different ways. And also, check out, I encourage you, the Facebook page for Love Honduras. That's our ministry that's happening right now overseas in Honduras. Lots of great things happening. And uh, we're happy to have you as a part of it. Uh, last time we were together, we started a new series called The End Time Believer. And I wanted to continue with that today. Uh, we laid a foundation last week talking about the end times and how when we study the end times, we're to look at two different things that are happening in the world besides Israel. Of course, there's many prophetic things uh, concerning Israel, but then we look at the stream of what's happening in the world and the stream of what's happening in the church. Now, Jesus made it pretty clear that the last great event before his return would be a harvest of souls, the greatest harvest of souls that we have ever seen. And so uh, it's important that we not lose focus, that we not get sidetracked off of all these other things that are going on in the world and forget that our mandate is the Great Commission, Mark chapter 16, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Some of you that are younger would not remember uh, when we hit the year 2000. You know, when we hit the year 2000, I was a part of the church. I was a pastor. And uh, we had um, uh, many uh, people in the church that were full of fear, just like people were during the pandemic, a spirit of fear that is unleashed in these last days, tried to grab a hold of many people. And I spent m many of our Sunday mornings at the Dream Center preaching against fear. And we uh, did more outreach than we ever did before. Uh, and had a great time seeing people give their lives to Jesus during the pandemic. But in the year 2000, everybody thought every computer in the world would crash. That when we went from 1999 to 2000, the computers wouldn't be able to figure it out. And instead of going to the year 2000, they would go to zero, zero. And uh, that everything, uh, I tell you, I knew people that were stockpiling their basements with uh, dehydrated water and getting ready for, uh, for everything to, to fall apart. And, I, and people were full of fear. So it's, you know, people mostly though, I, what I saw is that people were sidetracked. They were off on something else. And, and the devil loves that. The devil loves the church getting off on all these tangents and all these things and forgetting our mandate. Our mandate is to get people saved. That's the most important thing. You know, whatever church you go to, Every church will be different, have different characteristics. Every church will have different uh, flavors and different giftings. But every church, most important thing that should be happening is that people are getting saved. And so we're talking about that because in these last days, God is going to bring more people into his kingdom than ever before. We're going to see more people get saved than ever before. We're already seeing it, the, the beginnings of it, but it's going to be incredible. So for a great harvest... You need great Christians, and you need great churches. Jesus is not coming back for a weak, pathetic church that can hardly survive. No, the Bible tells us he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a glorious church, the Bible says. And so that's what we're studying right now in the, in this podcast, is how to, be, how to be one of those end-time believers, how to be one of those great Christians. Now, let's read about what's happening in the world and in the church and in the Bible, uh, because uh, Paul talked about this when he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. 
It says, but know this in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So here it tells us about the last days and all the terrible things, of course, that are happening in the world. And then he touches on the church, saying there's going to be, in the church, there's going to be a form of godliness, but a denial of power. So turn away from those people. So God is doing something in churches right now that have stayed true to the Great Commission more than ever before. It's exciting to see his provision, to see his power, to see his blessing that are upon ministries that are doing the work of the Great Commission. So now, let me just say this, now more than ever, it's more important, more than ever, what church you attend. You must attend a church that is full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, What I saw during the pandemic was a separation that was happening. And uh, churches that denied the power of God, churches that didn't do outreach, they got used to online services that had no power. They're still doing them in some places. You know, I, I heard one person told me their church, not only did you have to wear a mask, but they separated the vaccinated from the unvaccinated in the church. They just told me this. I said, I can't believe that something like that would happen. Well, actually, I can believe that it would happen. But, you know, I saw that separation happening during the pandemic. Churches that said, we're going to still do missions. We're going to still do outreach. We're going to still preach the gospel. Uh, We believe uh, that we're under the authority of God and God's going to bless us. I tell you, they're getting blessed and God is doing something. So get into a good church. That would be my first recommendation. Get into a good church that is preaching the gospel of Jesus And you are seeing people saved. People should be coming to the altar every Sunday, getting right with God, getting touched by the the power of the Holy Spirit. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit more than ever before. Remember, to bring in a great harvest, we need great Christians, and they come from great churches. And so I want to read to you a passage of Scripture that is often read when we study the end times. And It's Jesus talking to his disciples. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, we want you to show us the sign of the end. What is the sign? They asked him. And this is what we have, uh, the story we have here in in Jesus' response to this in Matthew 24, starting in verse 1. It says, Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Or surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed, no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I want you to see this. They came and they asked Jesus, what is the sign? Not signs plural, but what is the sign singular? Tell us the one thing That's going to happen before the end of the age. And then Jesus begins to tell of things that will happen. But he tells, he says specifically, these are not, these things will happen, but it's not the end. So don't be troubled. It's not the end when you hear about wars and rumors of wars. Then he says in verse seven, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. So these things are not the end. See, people look around 
right now. I, many Christians say Jesus, he could return at any moment. Look what's happening in the world. I really don't believe that. I believe that there's something, some things that must happen before the return of Jesus. I heard one preacher say, it's a preacher I like. He said, uh, everything's set. There's nothing else that, can, that has to happen before Jesus returns. Well, I disagree. Because uh, as we continue to read, Jesus is going to answer their question. Verse 9, it says, Then they will deliver you up in tribulation and kill you. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Boy, have we seen this. Have we seen this happening in our world? Verse 11, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of money of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Now, Jesus never answered their question until the next verse. Because they said, what is the sign, Jesus, of your return? Matthew 24, 14 says this, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Hallelujah. Listen, if you don't know a little bit about this verse and uh, about the Greek language, uh, I tell you the gospel has not been preached in every nation according to what Jesus said. Now, there's about 200 nations in the world, but Jesus wasn't talking about countries with borders. He was talking about ethnic groups, distinct ethnic groups of people. And there's still several thousand ethnic groups that have not even heard the name of Jesus. Even where we going in Honduras, the first time we went into some of the Tulipan Indian tribes, they had never heard of Jesus. Some of them had never seen a white person. They, they ran and hid behind trees when they saw my wife. And she's a beautiful person. So it wasn't because uh, she was ugly. It was because she was white. They said, we've never seen anything like that before. So we still have to take the gospel to many places. But Jesus says before he comes, uh, this gospel will be preached to every ethnic group. What is Jesus talking about here? He's talking about a great harvest, a great harvest of souls. So remember this. When you read about the end times, when you study the end times, when you hear a preacher about the end times, remember this. Remember what Pastor Eric said. It's always about the harvest. It's always about that. It should always be about that. Don't allow the devil to get you sidetracked with what's happening in the world around us. There is an antichrist spirit in the world now, that's for sure, that it has attacked many nations, but we cannot put aside the Great Commission. We are called to win people to Jesus, and that's what God wants you to do. So exciting, because, you know, God told the early church this was their mandate, and it's still our mandate today. Listen, if you want to be a part of some of a movement that's winning the lost, check us out at buffalodreamcenter.org. Be a part of what the Dream Center is doing. Get into a church. If you don't live in Buffalo, get into a church that is winning the lost, full of the Holy Spirit, because to bring in this last great harvest, we need great Christians that go to great churches. Father, I thank you for everyone listening right now to this podcast. Fill them with a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. Raise up a great army to reap this great harvest in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.